to part two of Let's Play Mega Man 4. First robot we're going to go after is Bright Man, in what is easily the... one of two very, very difficult levels in this game. Yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate to say. One of two very difficult levels in this game. So, Bright Man, or DCN-025, is a robot with the weapon called Flash Stopper. Flash Stopper emits one million watts of power in order to stun enemies, something we're going to be seeing in action very soon. A good point. He's long on ideas. I guess that means he has a lot of ideas. A bad point. He talks too much. He likes inventing and dislikes unmoral districts. I don't... I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. All right, Bright Man stage. It's a pretty difficult stage, pretty long stage. It's got uh, three main gimmicks. We're gonna be, we already saw a couple of them in action, but I'll be talking about them more when they actually come up. I know, you know what, I'll talk about them now. First gimmick, it's um, based on two enemies. Little um, flying enemies with light bulbs at the bottom that shoot uh, beams at you. Basically, you shoot them, the screen goes dark, you have to find these green robots that shoot fireworks up in the sky, the screen goes red again. Second gimmick is the cockroaches, or grasshoppers, I should say, not cockroaches, grasshoppers that jump on the spikes. You have to shoot the totem poles in order to move on. Third gimmick is this, these uh, moving half-moon platforms. Basically, red platforms fall when they reach the end, green platforms continue on, they go back and forth forever, so... This is an uh, extra screen, just like in the uh, Skull Man stage. You don't have to come here, but if you want that 8 tank and life, then go ahead. Use rush, co use rush Coil to get back, and or the wire. Also effective. And yeah, this is a pretty difficult stage. I wouldn't recommend this as your, uh, as your first stage. Not at all. This is... This is pretty demanding for a stage. We're back to the... Uh, Grasshopper gimmick. And jump. It gets pretty uh, complicated when the grasshoppers are on top of each other. You have to make sure you stand on the right one. Or else you're going to be sent backwards, and that's not a good thing. But I believe that's the last time you see that uh, grasshopper gimmick play out in Brightman stage. We are, however, now going to see a combination of gimmick one, which is these enemies that can turn to screen dark, and the green enemies that turn to screen bright again, and gimmick three, which is the uh, moving platforms. Remember, the red ones fall immediately when you reach the end, the green ones don't, they go back and forth, so you got some breathing room with the green ones, but the red ones are, you know, gotta move or you're dead. And yeah, that's it, that's the stage. Not as long as I said it was, but um, as I implied that it was, I should say, but uh, difficult. The boss is also very, very difficult. Not in concept. Basically, Bright Man has three moves. He shoots at you with his buster, he jumps at you, and he, you know, stuns you with the flash stopper. He doesn't freeze time, that's an important distinction. I'll, I'll talk more about that later when we get to Pharaoh Man, but he doesn't freeze time, he stuns you for a while. He shoots at you or he jumps at you. The thing that makes Bright Man so- Look at that! Look at how much damage he did! That's what makes him so difficult. The contact damage. The contact damage is insane on Bright Man. He does so much damage, I have to use an E-Tank. I mean, I don't have to, but, uh... If he... Come on, come on. Maybe I don't have to. I forget if I actually have to or not. Yeah, I do, because I was going to jump at me. He does so much contact damage. His Buster does plenty of damage. He's not an easy boss for that specific reason. If you want a chance with him, I would get the E-Tank in this stage and use Rush Coil to get back because he is just, he is, he does so much damage. His pattern itself is not that difficult. It's like Dust Man in a way, but he does so much damage on contact. Even shooting you with a buster, he does a lot of damage. He's not a robot I recommend for your first one. He can really catch you off guard with how much contact damage he does. It's it's insane. But I'm I'm done with Bright Man. We're we're done with Bright Man. Actually, we're not done with Bright Man because now his weakness his weakness is Rain Flush. You can also use 
the, I want to double check and make sure I get this right, the Pharaoh shot, and which is probably the better option for you, because, well, I mean, they're both pretty bad. Because Rain Flush, you have to, it takes a little bit for, in order to start doing damage. The Pharaoh shot is another charged weapon. Yeah, honestly, I just stick with the Mega Buster for him. Like, you know, get Bright Man down to pretty low health with the Mega Buster, and then, you know, then you just use your, uh, your Rain Flush to finish him up. But I'm done with Bright Man. I, I, I don't like Bright Man. His stage or the boss. It's, uh, ugh. Anyway, moving on. This music, by the way, if you ever saw the uh, the trailer for Mega Man Online, the first trailer for Mega Man Online, you probably recognize this music. It's pretty good music. Anyway, Drill Man, or DCN-027. Drill Man is a digger robot made for a construction site. Alright, he was given an award for finding a gold mine. Alright, a good point. Industrious. A bad point. He's haphazard. He likes rush jobs and dislikes calculations. Something just moved back there. Kind of freaked me out a little bit. That's why I paused there. Anyway, well, that's Drill Man. Good level theme. Again, used in the Mega Man Online trailer. It's pretty, tr pretty tricky life. Just uh, gotta stand right on the edge, make your jumps. I've died more than one occasion on that uh, on that jump there, so don't underestimate it. Make sure you don't jump all the way up for these uh, for these jumps here, because those spikes up there are low enough that uh, if you jump at your full height, you will accidentally touch them and get yourself killed. These guys are annoying. Uh, you can only hit them when their things are open and shooting at you, so not an ideal situation. Just use Rain Flush. It's a nice screen nuke, takes care of them one hit, as it does most things. E-Tank. Nice. We can use Rush Coil, or we can use your wire. Very good. Oh god, these things. These things are annoying. They're placed in such a way that, um, most of the time you're not gonna kill them before they, they, uh, hunker down and start rolling at you at full speed at which point they're invincible so that's not fun this last section of the stage um, has falling rocks they go down in one charge shot and I believe one normal pellet shot too the screen also introduces these uh, flying enemies that um, when they land they become turrets so don't let them land to become turrets you also have to make sure you jump into those uh, levers so you can, you know, activate the next uh, platforms. They're not, uh, they're not invisible. They come into existence when you, uh, when you hit the levers. Because if you don't hit the levers and you just jump, then you're going to fall into your death. So, you know, I guess they're, I guess we bring the platforms into existence? I, I, I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to philosophize how technology, philosophize, theorize, that's better. How technology works in Mega Man. We're at Drill Man. Drill Man's pretty tough. Not a robot I recommend you take on first. Basically, he's gonna drill into the ground, wait a few seconds at the very edge of one side of the screen, and then start jumping. Drill Man will pop up, and he will either just drill right back down, or he's gonna do something else, which we'll see in a second. So, again, just wait a few seconds, jump. It seems pretty easy right now. Like a very simple pattern. Until he starts moving around and jumping around, Doing a lot of contact damage, shooting his drill bombs that are very difficult to dodge, and have, and are bombs so that when they hit, they have an area of effect. It's not, it's not good. He, he's tough. Doesn't seem like in the beginning, but he is, he's very tough. And, ah. Oh. Damn it. Died. <sighs> Just use his weakness, which is the dive missile. You'll see that right now, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up now and just let this play out. Not easy. Use his weakness, which is the dive missile. 
I believe he's also hurt by a couple of other things, which I will double check right now. Let's see. Um, no, Dark Missile's pretty much it. I mean, Ferro Shovel does some decent damage when it's charged up, but it does the exact same amount of damage as the Mega Buster. It's the same thing for uh, Bright Man, too, so just use the Mega Buster for Bright Man. For Dive Man, just use the Dive. Just use the uh, Dive Missile. Oh, we got Rush Jet. We'll see it in action a bit. It's, it's changed a little bit from uh, from how it was in Mega Man 3. We'll see. Ah. But first, we got the Dive Bomb, which means if you were, for some reason, having any kind of trouble with, uh, <laughs> with Toad Man, you can make it even easier on yourself and just use the Drill Bomb. <laughs> It's so easy. But if for some reason you were having any trouble or you wanted to make the boss fight go even quicker, just use the Drill Bomb. It has a pretty interesting effect, which we'll talk about later, much later in the game. But um, basically, you can shoot it, and when it hits something like an enemy or a wall, it explodes. You can also press the, uh, the fire button again when it's still in the air before it hits something, and it'll explode prematurely. That's going to be very important for, for later on, but uh, let's, let's stop talking about the drill bombs and move on to talking about DCN-028, Pharaoh Man, an investigation robot for pyramids. He has thousands of henchmen robots. Wow, he's got an army to back him up, all right. A good point, a charismatic leader. A bad point, he's too nice to women. All right, that's... All right, whatever. He likes treasure and dislikes raiders. He's like Indiana Jones. Although that thousands of henchmen robots, he's uh, like the Arkham Knight there. How, how did he get thousands of henchmen robots? The Cossack build them all for him, or did he make some, or whatever. Anyway, we saw Rush Jet in action. You can come to this uh, special area here for the balloon adapter. The second of the special items you can collect in Mega Man 4. Collecting the balloon adapter skips you ahead to a, a later section in Pharaoh Man's stage, but we're going to show off what happens if you don't use Rush Jet to uh, go get the balloon adapter. Rush Jet, by the way, you can't uh, move up and down anymore. It's also, um, it's also on rails, the platform. So it's a combination of uh, item 2 and Rush Jet from Mega Man 3, because you can still control the uh, up and down the up and downness of the rush jet that's not a word but the up and downness of the rush jet subtly but um it's a moving platform like uh, item 2 was in mega man 2 so that's that's it that's all i wanted to say let's show off the balloon adapter now you'll be seeing rush jet more in action when we actually get to dr cossack's castle later on but the balloon adapter it's basically item 1 from mega man 2 exactly the same as item one for Mega Man 2. The only thing that's different is how it looks. Instead of it being platforms with item one on it, it's balloons. And yeah, that's the, um, that's the section of Pharaoh Man stage. It introduces those, uh, zombie ro those, uh, zombie head-throwing robots that you wouldn't see until this bit of the stage if you went to go get the balloon adapter. Those have these, uh, platforms here. They're turrets, but once you land on them, they, um, they start moving to get you across. Yeah. It's a pretty short stage, not like, uh, Bright Man stage or the next stage. Ugh, the next stage. See, this is where we, we'd be introduced to the, um, the zombie head-throwing robots. If we went to go get the balloon adapter. But if you didn't, then you would have seen these guys earlier. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the hell I was doing there. I guess I just really like the zombie head throwing robots. Anyway, Feral Man. It's a pretty difficult boss. He's actually weak to his own weapon. Well, to an extent, he takes the same amount of damage of it as he would from the Omega Buster. He's a pretty difficult boss. He, uh, he's like Quick Man. He jumps around all over the place, shooting really fast. He has two attacks, the um, Pharaoh Shot and Pharaoh Wave. This is Pharaoh Wave that he charges up. He also has the Pharaoh Shot when he jumps around and throws those uh, balls at you. That's Pharaoh Shot. And this is Pharaoh Wave. 
Very difficult, does a lot of damage, a lot of contact damage. You can take him on with the Mega Buster, but I wouldn't recommend it, because there is a much, much easier way of taking him out. A weapon that's technically his weakness, but technically not his weakness, because it doesn't actually do damage to him. You'll see it right now. His quote-unquote weakness is Flash Stopper, Bright Man's weapon. The thing about Bright Man's weapon, though, it's it's not like um, Flash Stopper from Mega Man 2. It doesn't freeze time. It stuns him. You're gonna see. You're gonna see his bright flash of light. That's the uh, stun wearing off and Fire Man being able to move again. Basically, Flash Stopper is. It freezes him. That's it. See, he's gonna start moving again. And now he's stunned again. And then you just shoot him with the Mega Buster because you can actually use the Mega Buster after you've uh, quote unquote frozen time or stunned him. And yeah, that's it. Just keep shooting them after you stun them, and that's it. It's not technically a weakness, but you can use it like a weakness. Basically, Flash Stopper only works with Pharaoh Man. If you try it on any of the bosses, it's not going to work. So, use it for Pharaoh Man. It's going to stun him in place, and then he can just open fire with the Mega Buster. And you don't have to switch for the Mega Buster, but I'm rambling on now. You, you saw it in action. And for beating him, we get the Pharaoh Shot. Which is another charged weapon. Oh, by the way, the continue option introduced in Mega Man 4. If you decide for whatever reason to press continue instead of stage select, then all you gotta do, then all you get is get, get that. All you get is you get to play the stage again, but when you get to the end, you don't even get to fight the boss again. You just teleport it away. So it's kind of pointless. I don't know why they put it in there, but whatever. I. Ugh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that. Don't don't put continues in. I mean, at least let us fight the boss again, like in Mega Man One. Why would you just let us play the stage again? <sighs> I don't know. But I'm rambling. DCN 029 Ringman, a robot created to terminate Mega Man. Oh, oh just like Skull Man. All right. His weapon is shaped like a ring. A good point, he's a good strategist. A bad point, overconfidence. He likes deck qua, I don't know what that is, and dislikes children. <laughs> he dislikes children. All right, no, fair enough. This guy's a jerk. And the toughest robot master, and the toughest stage in the game. At least out of the eight robot masters so you can fight. This is not a guy I recommend you take on first. Not at all. His stage includes four mini bosses, is very long, and is only made easier with the use of the balloon adapter, which is an optional weapon. Well, I mean, technically the Rush Coil can make it easy too, but balloon adapter really simplifies some stuff. First mini boss is this hippo thing on a platform. He's always going to have uh, two missiles on screen. Just got to keep shooting the um, supports underneath the platform to lower the platform and get them low enough for, uh, for you to shoot the hippo itself. And yeah, these things are uh, immune to the Mega Buster, but they're pretty weak to other stuff. They take damage from the drill bombs, the dive missiles, Rain Flush does them into... Um, they're not like those um, those things from Mega Man 1 or Mega Man 2 that are only weak to one specific weapon like I thought they were. They're weak to quite a few weapons, but not the Mega Buster. Yeah, Pharaoh Shot, they're weak to that too. Rain Flush, I already said, but yeah. They also go down with it. Alright, next screen is going to have Mini Boss number 2. By the way, I love this theme so much. Ring Man's theme is so... It's so cool. It's so last stages. It's so last stage-ish. It's, it's a really cool thing. I like it. Second mini boss is this uh, eyes inside this ring. A couple of uh, well-placed charge shots will take care of it. Gotta be careful though. And that first instance of the fight isn't that bad because you can stand far, far enough away where the rings will never hit you. So you just have to time your jumps to uh, hit the eyes. But the later instance is going to be much more difficult. Mini boss number three is Hippo Round 2. Same exact thing as Hippo number one. Again, he's always going to have two missiles on screen. Never more than two. So, it, you know, 
If you don't want to do anything, just uh, don't shoot the missiles. Let's let them fly around you. Not that bad, though. There's an optional screen up there. You don't have to go up there if you don't want to. But if you do, then Eddie will be there waiting for you. I don't need that. Thanks, Eddie. And I'm not going to keep going up and down until I can get something good. Well, I do, but not for long. Because I get a knee tank. Yeah. I, I, I actually forgot about that. I thought I'd just completely skip that, but no, he gave me a knee tank. Thanks, Eddie. These things again from uh, Drill Man stage. It's a pretty tough stage. Again, this is this a rough, tough stage. These uh, platform things are back in this uh, second half of the stage. Although now they um, they go in from the other side, so you have to time your jumps instead of just running really fast. This little bit you can use Rush Coil to uh, to get back up safely, or you can just use the balloons if you have them. It's a better option if you have the balloons. And yeah, make sure you run really fast here so you don't fall on spikes. And finally, mini boss number four, last enemy of the level. The ring with the eyes inside of it, round two. This time you are close enough that the rings can hit you, so you gotta be careful. Not only time your jumps to hit the eyes, but time your jumps to dodge the rings. Oh my god, I love this theme so much. Dun 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 Alright, I'm I'm not gonna hum anymore. Ring man! It's pretty tough, although I found a uh, a very good pattern to make him fall into. He's gonna start by throwing a ring at you. Don't shoot at him while he is running from one side of the screen to another. He will always throw a ring boomerang whenever you do that. The best way to take him out, dodge that first ring, and shoot him as he falls down. Shoot him as he falls down or as he's getting close to the other side of the screen with a charge shot. And then jump over him, let him jump up and shoot his rings at you again. Just repeat the process over and over again. It's not a pattern I can very really explain that well, but it's a pattern that you can see in action very well. You're going to see it much better here because now that i got a hang of it, I'm going to use it in tandem with his weakness to uh, take him out really quick. So, he throws. Come on, I know I get this right. There we go, come on. And... There's the pattern. Now I'm starting to do the pattern. This is this is the pattern you want to fall into. Either with the Mega Buster or the Pharaoh Shot. Pharaoh Shot being his weakness. Mega Buster, this works too. Basically, you never want to shoot at him when he's running from one side of the screen to another. Because he's going to throw his Ring Boomerang at you. You can't dodge that Ring Boomerang. It's going to do a lot of damage. It's not fun. But if you can get him down to that pattern that I got him down to at the end of the fight there... And you'll be in good hands. And you'll get a very good weapon. The Ring Boomerang. Seriously though, Ring Man's not a boss I'd go after first. Ever. Anyway, with Ring Boomerang in hand, this is Dust Man's weakness. Nothing special about the fight, just uh, gotta get close to him to use it though, because the Ring Boomerang is a boomerang weapon. Short range, it's powerful, but it has short range. Come on, dust man. There we go. Now it's going down. And... Boom. Alright. And that's dust man's weakness. Done and dusted. Pun intended. Oh! We can go after Cossack himself. Alright, next time on Let's Play Mega Man 4. We're going to hit up Kazakh's castle and put a stop to this once and for all. See you then.